let's think back to physics and let's recall what gravitational potential energy was. So I have a couple different balls on hills here. So this blue ball here, we say has low potential energy compared to this red ball here. And if you notice, there is a difference in height between the blue ball and the red ball. The red ball is sitting higher, so it has more gravitational potential energy. If you have a ball on the top of a hill, like let's say here, it has stored potential energy. If I give that ball a little bit of a nudge, that potential energy is going to be transferred into kinetic energy, and that ball is going to start rolling down the hill. So the point of this analogy is understanding that potential energy is stored energy. Now in chemistry, we also see potential energy, but instead of a ball rolling down a hill, we have a chemical reaction. So in this diagram, you see that we have our reactants, which is what we're starting with, and our products, which is what we're finishing with. So think about baking cookies. Our reactants would be all of the ingredients that we're combining, and our products would be the cookie dough before it goes into the oven. Now, on this diagram, there's a couple things that we need to explain. So the first thing we're going to look at is our activated complex. Okay, Our activated complex is the transition state between the products and the reactants. Okay, So it's the very top of that hill that you see in this diagram. Now, all of these potential energy diagrams are going to look like a hill. So the activated complex is very easy to spot because it's going to be at the top of that hill and just know that it is a transition state. The next thing we're going to look at is the activation energy. Activation energy is the amount of energy it takes for the reaction to occur. This on our diagram is the part of the graph from the reactants all the way up to the activated complex, Okay, that whole range here. It's always going to be positive. So if this were potential energy in physics, it takes a certain amount of energy to get from the bottom of the hill up to the top. Kind of the same thing happens here. It takes a certain amount of energy for our reaction to occur, so we have to put energy into the system, our activation energy, in order for our reaction to occur. The final item that we need to identify on our potential energy diagram is the change in enthalpy, which is delta H. Now, if you look on the diagram, delta H is the space between the products and the reactants. Delta H, or the change in enthalpy, is the total energy change for the reaction. It's the same as Q in our equation, Q equals MC delta T. Delta H can be find, found by subtracting the energy of the products from the energy of the reactants. So if you look on our diagram here, we have our reactants sitting up high, and we have our products sitting down below. The space between those is our delta H. Delta H can be positive or negative. If it's positive, that means it's an endothermic reaction, energy is being absorbed. If it's negative, that means it's an exothermic reaction, and energy is being released. So if you look at our diagram here, our reactants are sitting up much higher than our products. Because our reactants are higher in potential energy than our products, that means it's going to be a larger number. So if we were to determine delta H using our formula, products minus reactants, we're going to get a negative number, which means this is an exothermic reaction. Let's look at a couple of examples with some actual numbers. In this example, everything's already labeled on our diagram. The first part of this example asks us to find the activation energy. The activation energy is the total amount of energy between the reactants and the activated complex. Remember, the activated complex is the transition state. So we're looking at the difference here. So the activated energy, activation energy, is found by taking the difference in energy between the activated complex and the reactants. If you look on the diagram, 80 is where our activated complex is sitting, and 30 is where our reactants 
are starting. So 80 minus 30 gives us a value of 50 kilojoules. Next, let's try to find the change in enthalpy, or delta H, and then we'll identify the type of reaction and determine what happens with the energy. So delta H can be found by subtracting the energy from the products and the reactants. So the products are sitting at 50, the reactants are sitting at 30. So 50 minus 30 gives us a delta H value of 20. Now if you reference the table from earlier, positive delta H value means this is an endothermic reaction. In an endothermic reaction, energy is being absorbed. Let's look at another example. Same thing. Let's find the change in enthalpy, identify the type of reaction, and then determine what's happening with the energy. So delta H can be found by subtracting the energy of the products and the reactants. The products are sitting at 20 kilojoules, and the reactants are sitting at 70. So 20 minus 70 gives us a change in enthalpy of negative 50 kilojoules. Because the delta H value is negative, this is an exothermic reaction, energy is being released.